Corduroys, huh? Yep. Making Cords. a comeback. Man, it's still cold outside. out, but not that cold. I call so my I corduroy bear. Corduroys. Um, so, uh, well, are you gonna make fun of my clothes too? The stitching? No, I, was, I just realized I like your shirt too. Like, well, thank it, you. You guys are, whether you know it or not, you're bringing back '90s. It never left. It never yeah, left. Until our my, bucket hat's my out here. Life. <laughs> hey, you guys, like you're gonna joke, be modeling a real. bucket hat not, in a few yeah. weeks, my oh, friend. Man. Welcome to Filmhouse, everybody. This week's episode is sponsored by Harry's and 1-800-Flowers. I've got my buds Elise, friend, maybe, Adam, and James. You never confirmed at the end of the last episode. Still waiting for my gift. <laughs> I don't know. You get a gift? From Dan, hopefully. Um, well, Dan's got a code for 1-800-Flowers, so maybe you'll, maybe you'll see something. Impress something. mom there. I ain't your mama yet. But uh, yeah, we're going to talk about Spider-Man trailer. And just a heads up, there's a bunch of spoilers for the end of Avengers Endgame. So if you haven't seen that or you care about us spoiling it, we're gonna. Uh, so I'll do a little time thing for when we stop talking about Spider-Man spoilers, if yeah. we do. The irony of having Tom Holland tell you that there's a spoiler. <laughs> that's pretty great. Yeah. yeah that's what I was, I was like, what, is he going to go on a talk show and just tell me the trailer? <laughs> that's never really happened, though, before, right? Where... A trailers come out and they said, hey, if you haven't seen this movie, don't watch this trailer. You guys remember... Because people whine so much about shit Tom, now. Tom Holland, I feel like, did some Fair interviews enough. when he was talking about uh, the... Like, he's like, they didn't even give me the script right. the end game. Yeah. Like, they didn't even give me the script. That's smart I'm like, of them. They probably didn't give him the script because he was reading the script for Far From Home, which had all the answers in it. So they just assumed he wasn't a moron. Who would piece it together? Oh, they probably didn't get in the script because he spoils everything on every talk show he goes on. Yeah. Does he? That's cute. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's, he's Mark Ruffalo is a bigger spoiler. It's adorable, but I just love how he's like, oh, it's me, Tom Holland. I'm going to show you the trailer. And, hey, where's Tony Stark? Like, <laughs> he's just like such a, yeah. such a, a chameleon. Pretty cool. Though. I, we complained about this when the first trailer came out. That they're like, hey, Spider-Man trailer coming out. And then we all look at each other like, didn't he, didn't he die? I think we no. all knew he was coming back, obviously, because it's a cash cow. But yeah. it I'll, I'll this is, this repeat is, myself, but it's, it's fun to pretend sometimes. This is where I think business sometimes interferes with art. <laughs> because <laughs> the business of side, say, a marketing team said, we have to start the marketing machine for this mm -hmm. before Endgame comes out. But Bye. from an audience perspective, it would have been so much better if this marketing machine started after Endgame came out so that way it didn't ruin the dramatic tension like, of Endgame. Did, we did, I don't feel like we needed that original trailer, right? But no. then it would have only been like a month, However, yeah. six weeks. I mean, I think Marvel's in a machine though. And I think if you release this after Avengers, people would be clamoring to see this trailer. Mm -hmm. It's true. They would lose their people minds. People would more hype. Yeah. They did a good job of hiding stuff I mean, in that yeah, first trailer. They did. They, there was no Tony Stark. I mean, they've, they've already released their 20 year plan or whatever. So sure, like, yeah. you know, like they yeah. can't really do anything anymore. Also, I don't think anyone with a even minor association or affinity for comics or stories like this actually thought that he was gone. dead or yeah. anyone was gone forever. I mean, there were three or four of those people out there. Mm. I mean, yeah, but you can't, you can't make it for them. There but. was someone who's like, I thought he was Miles now and CGI and or he's full cartoon now. <laughs> yeah. Someone's I mean, confused. Venom will take over the mantle. We <laughs> 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 <Don't really> hope. <laughs> but yeah, I, I also I forget uh, that this is a joint effort between Disney and Sony. So it could have been Sony saying, we need yeah. something yeah, to yeah, put out yeah. there. And then Marvel's like, we don't want to no, please don't make us do this. And they're like, too bad. And so yeah. they probably did the best they could with what they had. Pro they were probably being forced from a promotional standpoint. I forget that. Sony, happened. they probably <laughs> needed to release this movie when they released it because Sony was trying to hit some sort of Fiscal, fiscal yeah. quarterly thing or whatever, mm -hmm. so it had to come out at a certain time. Oh well, and then the negotiations. The machine dictated. There. We got a trailer early, and it was spoiled. But if yes. we pretend, much like Terminator Two, mm -hmm. had you gone in knowing nothing about the movie, never seen the trailer, you probably would have been more enriched seeing the movie, thinking mm -hmm. that Arnold was a bad guy. That spoiler for Terminator Two. <laughs> <laughs> at least the stakes. We should get Tom Holland to do a thing at the beginning of this yeah. film house where he talks about Terminator 2 spoilers. <laughs> I'll do it. Video. I'm sure he's on Cameo or whatever. We could get them. But yeah, that some I'm sure someone out there, admit, like they woke up from a coma and they're like, Endgame's out, perfect. And then they see the show like, oh my God, wow. Mm -hmm. It's just back to back to back. What a great life they had. 
I envy the coma victim. But anyway, <laughs> about the actual trailer. <laughs> Sorry. We can go on forever. Well, the trailer's interesting because now they, they are pointing out the multiverse thing, which I think is bullshit. Which it could be real or it could be a fake out. I think it's right? a fake out. That's I what think I mean this, by bullshit. This whole thing's a fake out. Come on, we know it. Yeah, it's Mysterio. Mysterio's the bad guy. We know he's the bad guy. He's a dude who filled the void. He's kind of greenish. With the lack of, yeah, the lack of purple. heroes. He's a, he's a goblin a type. Those are evil colors. But secondary oh. colors are bad guy colors. Oh. He's, he's, tricked, he's tricked Nick Fury into believing that... He's from a different universe. He's from a different universe and that he'll be a hero, but he's actually causing all these problems. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, and then he's. This is his way of profiting or doing some sort of wild yeah. scheme, and he's going to turn out to be a bad guy in the end. Come on, guys! Nick Fury's actually banging Aunt May. It's not uh, whatever. Not his happy name. Hogan. I'm not happy. I was going to call him Whitey. Whitey. <laughs> I can't Whitey remember Hogan. what his name was. That man kickstarted the MCU. <laughs> you monster. Uh, I I I hope we're wrong. I actually kind of hope Mysterio is a good guy. Well, they need to surprise us somehow. In a way, yeah. It's it would be tropey and lazy, I guess, in a way, if it was just like, I'm your best friend, I tricked you. It would actually be better, and my hope is that Mysterio actually is a a true hero and he has a fall and becomes a villain. So, I thought they did a good job with Vulture. Yeah. So I hope they at least give it He's that not much entirely rather than, horrible. Yeah, rather than I'm fooling you and all of S.H.I.E.L.D. or is S.H.I.E.L.D. even real? We don't know. Or whatever they're saying, like, is Mysterio creating all of that? Because there's a character, they got Logan to murder all the X-Men the comics at least so he's capable of that I'm curious if uh, it might be too soon but I mean I do I do think the theory that Tony Stark's gonna come back as a Jarvis type Mm -hmm. is a very interesting theory compelling theory this is a movie where I could see it happening that would be very soon after Avengers I feel like I'd take away a lot of the weight a lot of the sacrifice the the emotional weight would be gone unless (laughs) unless it's like you're saying like kind of the way he the Endgame has that projection of him. Mm-hmm. If the post credits of this movie is uh, him back in New York, feeling really alone about the state of things and the state of heroes, and then getting a message like, "Hey, kid, record. Decided to record this for you." At some some point between the <laughs> five minutes where flight? I decided to make a time machine and not, and so I recorded this for you, and so like I'll help you out, bud. We can do this. Also, I got something for you. And then he flips some venom. <laughs> like a copy? He's like, he's like, I have some information for you. It's this footage. And he goes like that and then spreads out a screen and it's Yeah. Venom. And then Mysterio bursts in out of breath and he's like, I think I know where the rhino went. Yep. Cut, wow. Hard cut to black. And then yeah. Shocker shows up too. <laughs> well, they already had Shocker. The Electro yeah. then, yes. No, Our, Scorpion. Uh, right? Hydro Man, Didn't the man with up, hydraulic arms. They set up Scorpion in Homecoming, I think. They did yeah. at the very end. He's a man with a tattoo on his neck. Uh, yeah, credit scene is going to be Adam Warlock. We all know that. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, closure. I, yeah, this is so. This is the last one. Uh, this is the last MCU Sony movie we get. Well, mm. it's the last Phase Three movie. I can yeah. see Sony wanting Spider Man back after giving Lord and Miller nine figures to do Spider Man stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a man. That's I'm going to miss. It's a bummer. I like Spider Man. Tom that, Holland's in the great. I think yeah. he might be best Spider Man. He might be best Spider Man other than Neil Patrick Harris. It's a safe. What's that? Spe- that? It was the MTV it, short poor, lived, computer animated version. Poorly received, poorly animated, yeah, poorly real made. ugly, real bad. Yeah, but still Neil Patrick Harris number one, and then Tom Holland number Had two. Had a cool trance movie. song in the beginning by John Digweed. Check it out if you haven't. I know you won't. <laughs> it's a good podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, Moving yeah. right along, yeah. I do uh, think so. You know, Sony loses a lot of good faith with their audience if they decide to pull out. Well. Maybe, I yeah. I don't know because they made a Would billion dollars with Venom. So I don't, yeah, I don't think people know. I think it's weird that Sony's actually playing this really well because they, for Can't the, make the only people that care, it's us that are going to get pissed off mm-hmm. when they say, "Oh, we're pulling this out of the MCU." We're the only ones who are going to care because we know. But if they're go- giving it to Lord and Miller. I think we're kind of it's gonna, still good. We're probably going to go like, Ooh, well, maybe we'll wait and see, and then Sony gets away with whatever they want to get away with. Yeah, I guess. Can't here's a dumb maybe. question: Can Spider Man exist without Iron Man? Yes, That's a question I never thought I would ask. <laughs> yeah, sure, yeah, he can. Yeah. Oh, because I, so. I think they were worried with Homecoming that they're like, we don't know if a Spider Man movie's gonna like it's gonna top anything right now or do anything unless Iron Man's in it, which is such a weird. That's why I think AI. 
Tony Stark is going to be Spider Man's companion if well, if they keep Tom Holland in instead of. Karen? How's that the name of his robot? Who's Karen? If Sony pulls back Spider Man, I seriously doubt Marvel and Disney are going to be like, you can have Tony Stark. They're going to say, fuck off. You think Whitey's going to be his uh, (laughs) partner in crime? Yes, the Hogan. It is his surrogate dad now. Nah. Well, he is fucking his mom, which is good for him. (laughs) That's not a well fitting suit. Is that a real thing? Uh, yeah. I think that that was yeah. alluded to in the first trailer. Damn. Yeah. She's going to be with Whitey, and then she's going to lock herself in the bathroom with that hologram and <laughs> bang one out. I guarantee it. I think her uh, real life, uh, her and Robert Downey Jr. Versus Tomei? For a while. Yeah. Really? Yeah. RDJ? Yeah. Tomei? They, they had a thing. RDJ? Tomei? Yeah. And I heard that uh, Spider- Spider-Man Homecoming rekindled that relationship. Even yeah. though he's married with like four children. <laughs> yeah. It's like happily married. Yeah. Right? Also, Karen them. is voiced by Jennifer Connelly. Who, who is Karen? That. That's the voice the of the spider role. suit. That he's like talking to in the first movie. Married so seems to less Paul Bettany. That's how she Jarvis. got the gig. <laughs> they have, they're making Who's money off of Jarvis? Off of <laughs> Damn. He's, he's the old <laughs> butler that <laughs> opens the car door for John Slattery. Are you guys excited Ooh. for this movie? <laughs> Are yeah. you guys excited for this movie, sure. even though coming down off of the massive high of Endgame? Absolutely. I I'm, like Spider-Man a lot. How many years Sammy J got left in him? He signed He's on. 70. He signed on. He's the only person who renewed re, renewed his contract without even a second thought. He wow. said, I'll take less money. I think he his had, agent has just a stamp I'll just, yeah, signature on it. <laughs> I'll just keep going. I don't, and I don't blame him. Uh, yes, excited. Not excited for the parts where there's going to be about 45 minutes of downtime of them you know, hanging out, out in Venice. going on vacation and like kind of filming all the stuff they have to do that is not expensive CGI because they have to pad the movie in order to move it along. I understand you have to do that, but uh, looking forward to the action and how it all ties together or I guess wraps up Spider Man's storyline. I don't know. I hope I don't think they do can that. wrap anything up. Uh, barely I, started anything. I understand I'm in the minority in this, but I'm kind of with Adam in the sense that I don't really like his friends. Spidey's friends? Yeah. I, well, I like, they're gonna have to. One? Well, they're Flash. You don't like Zendaya? I'm okay with her. She's fine. But yeah, in the, even great. in the first movie, she was like just kind of like a hard ass for the sake of being a hard ass. Yeah, at the end, you're like, my name's Gwen Stacy. What? Oh, I don't remember any of that. It doesn't matter. <laughs> but, <laughs> I don't remember this movie. Now that I think about it, he goes to Washington D.C. He goes everywhere except for New York, like He's New York City, Queens. Or He's whatever. in Queens, yeah. Which I. Once that's I, the best part of that movie is I, when he's I, hanging out in his hometown. I like a version of Spider-Man that's not 45 years old. And yeah. I think that's been great. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hey, but let me no, ask looks you like this. a child still. Only because uh, James introduced me to Spectacular Spider-Man, the short-lived cartoon. Oh, that is show. the best version of Spider-Man, Yeah, right? which I, I, I like high school Spider-Man. Oh, yes. So. And Gwen Stacy's great in that, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, they're all... Er, that, Every iteration yeah. of the character is yeah. great in that She's cartoon. a little science, it, science girl. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I felt like that was the best iteration of Spider-Man being adapted to anything. This in Homecoming is close, where they're at least keeping him young. They could not wait be a kid. to get uh, Tobey Maguire <laughs> out of <laughs> high school, because they're like, this guy's 32. Are you get least, him out now. Like Jake Gyllenhaal finally made it into a Spider-Man movie. He's not Spider-Man. He was, like always he was always destined Spider-Man to be. Pick. Really? Yeah. yeah. He was going to well, replace was, Toby. Well, he was even in the running during the Toby Maguire Banged phase. Banged Kristen Dunst trying and, to get him. And then when they didn't go with him, Banged I was like, are you shitting me? He's great. Yeah. He's Jake Gyllenhaal old, is like though. the good Toby Maguire. He's like the good version of a lot of actors. Yeah. I mean, early on, like October Sky era, he mm-hmm. looked a lot more like Toby Maguire, but then Toby Maguire stopped aging. He, he got he got fat a little bit, and then he His still looks like a child. this way. Yeah. But then Jake like, Gyllenhaal is just aged like a fine wine, and he got better at acting. <laughs> like uh, he was always a good actor, but I think he's gotten better roles, and he's—I know—he's in his old suit. But yeah, there was the whole thing where uh, Spider-Man Two, Tobey Maguire, like almost, or he did break his back doing that one stunt or whatever. And then they were, they were going to replace him with Jake Gyllenhaal. Just so you guys, uh, just in the middle of the movie without. I think they're going to reshoot it. Trailer, yeah. trailer analysis. That yeah. scene where they're in the bar together. Spider-Man is in the black. The black Spider-Man noir suit. Yeah, yeah. there's three or and, four suits, and the, and uh, Mysterio is in there as well without his helmet. Mm-hmm. If you watch later on in the trailer, they're fighting a fireman next to a Ferris wheel. That same Ferris wheel appears when Spider-Man is in the Spider-Man noir suit, which means that sequence probably happens not towards the end of the movie like we think it does because it's a big bad guy, but more towards the beginning where Mysterio is really trying to gain his trust. Isn't there like a goat man behind them too in that bar or something? Yeah, I think goat man's behind all everything. Where was goat man? Yeah, can we look at it for a second? We're going to analyze. It's after the waves. Uh, 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 Hang on one moment, please. (laughs) The other thing 
I wonder they're going to have to acknowledge this at some point, or maybe they'll just gloss over. It, be like, man, didn't it suck how we all got snapped? And so, then yeah. before because before that, it's been I, five years. Before? No, no, they, them in the bar is after this. It's Bef- after this, and it's before it. Oh, there is a goat. Yeah. No. There's Do you a think goat. goat man's behind this? I think it's either Halloween or alternate universe. Well, they're in Europe. Aren't like people yeah. like, doing Renaissance Fair all the time over there? I mean, there? they're both also just hanging out in a bar with their masks yeah, off. Yeah, their suits on. Not, not, si- not that. Oh, Tom, I, Quentin Beck's married. Mm. Yeah, maybe. Perhaps. It's or it's trick. just an illusion. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't something. It was something weird where he got. The original comic story was he got fired because they're like, you're no good, Quentin. Get out of here. He goes, I'll show them. I'll make the best special effects ever. And they're like, they're like these are pretty good special effects. Mm-hmm. You're sure. rehired. He goes, no, I steal diamonds. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Yeah. But I, anyway, my only so thing is, man. if what I think the plot is, is true. What? Where oh. we think Mysterio is a good guy, mm-hmm. actual bait and switch, he's a bad guy. I hope that's not the case. But if that is the case, I wish they had done it in a different way where they had introduced a Spider-Man ally and everyone was all excited because Spider-Man was going to be teaming up with a with a European or UK or some sort of based ally. It's like, oh shit, Spider-Man's teaming up with, I don't know, I'd have to Google who would be a good fit. Captain Britain. Captain Britain, yeah. And and (laughs) his sister, Psylocke. Um, But uh, but like it was some sort of team up like that and you're like oh cool and then halfway through the movie it's revealed no it was Mysterio and then you get a twofer in that would have been a good trick out and then you're like, you're like oh shit they cast Jake Gyllenhaal as whatever this mm-hmm. character but it's like no he's actually Mysterio and in the credits it says mm-hmm. Jake Gyllenhaal and it says the one character name and then a slash and the Ooh. other character uh. name and you're just like whoa I do that, think the suit looks really fucking cool. What, what, oh no, it looks great. The yeah. design for, for like a really corny comic booky looking thing. Mm-hmm. It looks rad. Come to I'm, life. I'm down for it. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I think before Endgame, I was less sold on this movie, and now that Endgame's over and that they're acknowledging it, and it's all fitting in. I'm more interested in it. It's sort of the uh, the lie that got me into Captain Marvel. Where I'm like, oh wow, I can see how she's connected to this tangentially, and uh, she's not. It's, it was very loose. The scrolls had nothing to do with Endgame, but who knows? They'll be back. <laughs> maybe Jake Jones has a scroll. Oh, maybe. That's it. Ooh. It's not going to happen. Did you notice that the bus was exploding, but it it was actual pyrotechnics? That's Mysterio. Did you? He did that. <laughs> yeah. actually exploded. He's back that's, there. I think that's my problem with like all these big elemental creatures. It's like, wouldn't people like see through some of these... The assumption is that it is a special effect illusion because it's Mysterio and he's the one behind right. all this. But it might actually... Look, 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 here's the well, hope, but the thing is, is if you look at any Spider-Man he history or lore, what could these things possibly be other than manifestations of Mysterio? Yeah. <sighs> nothing. Yeah. There's nothing. Unless they're creating something brand new, which are all elemental monsters, which is just completely out of the lore of Spider-Man altogether. Yeah. It has to be... His mm-hmm. manifestation. Dude's name's just Mysterio. You don't think he's hiding something? <laughs> like, you know? Do you think he's going to introduce, introduce himself <laughs> as Mysterio? Does, does or it, is he just going to say, oh, my name's Quentin? Doesn't Samuel Jackson say something in the trailer where he's like... Quentin Beck? He calls him Quentin Beck? No one really calls themselves it, by their like, yeah, you can't, superhero names He can't call himself... Well, there's, a very, there's a scene in Infinity Tom War. Tom Holland says, I'm Tom Spider-Man. Holland, they they address this. Yeah. Oh, we're doing... I know, I remember that, yes. So. But it's always, hey, Cap... No one goes, get down, Captain America. It's like, Steve, get down. No, it's but when always, you have to introduce the We're character. that pussy Hawkeye. <laughs> <laughs> so this is like, Ronan. His name's Ronan now. How can that be special effects? Like, I don't know. He's good, okay? He's real good. I don't know what to tell you. I'm, you're <laughs> asking all the right questions, sense. Dan, and it's making me want to see the movie in a month. So yeah. you can, Here's the thing. You this is a bait, bucks. though. This isn't the, this isn't the end of the movie. movie. No, no matter how big this is, it makes it look like it's How's the end of the movie. It's not the end of the movie. What's the end of the movie? I think the end of the movie is when they're in that wasteland in like the desert. <laughs> I think desert? that's that towards looks like the, the beginning. Scenes. The, the I rock area? So. I don't oh. think so. Yeah. We Look, we get Italy. We get Britain. <laughs> Why go on vacation? So you, Or, sorry, do you call it Britain? UK? I don't know. London town. Tom Holland said, if we're going to make this movie, we're going to make it on my terms. And they said, shut the (laughs) fuck up. You got three more of these in here. What's your paper? What's your beef with his friends? I just don't. I just don't. You want a big jockey flash? I don't have a beef with them. I just don't think they're that interesting. Like the the dude who bullies him, Peter Parker, but really loves Spider Man. I'm like, what? That's that's Flash. It's it's more the Adam. That's great. It's more the Adam side of thing. 
where it's what well, you just said. They're going to be the fluff of the movie. Oh, of course, oh, okay. yeah, yeah, they're yeah. going to be the part where Spider Man doesn't yeah, yeah. get to be Spider Man. Yeah, you're you're our reason to cut away from Spider Man doing cool stuff and doing Spider Man stuff because it, we See, have no we have a on the bus. Mysterio. <laughs> <laughs> they're running off the bus. I don't know. I yes, good trailer, good movie, mm-hmm. good Jake. No, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. See, this looks like the end of the movie. That looks like the end of the movie because he's all frazzled up. Well, he see? doesn't have, and the he helmet doesn't have on. his helmet. He's That's all frazzled up. He looks more like mm. a bad guy there. This is them riding in towards the end of the movie. Uh, That's the wasteland at the end of the movie. Gotcha. So, Cut to Warlock. So Tom Holland. Cut to Warlock. Tom Holland gets the um, Tony Hawk glasses that he had in Infinity War. Wait, mm-hmm. So he does have Which, another suit here. Sorry, Adam. Is it different? I mean, it looks like it's like red and black. As sure. opposed to blue. We get all sorts of costume changes. More yeah. than a Tomb Raider game. More than a Gaga Met Gala. Is Hell it yeah. I just I thought it was the lighting video. that made it look... I don't know. Because well, well, he starts off in Iron he Spider He starts suit. off in Iron Spider. This then, is probably the suit that they give him when this, he's like, I'm not taking... Because he remember goes, I'm not taking this from the other trailer. Mm-hmm. It's like, I'm leaving it at home. And then Nick Fury probably says, sorry, we brought oh, you a yeah. suit. Yeah. He's got and military surplus thing, suit. Or whatever. And then the other suit, yeah, yeah, the other suit is a fire suit. So here's him fighting at the Ferris Wait, wheel. Wait, the suit in his lunch bag. Fighting at the Ferris wheel. He flies in. Then later on you'll see the Flame Man is also fighting at the Ferris wheel. And the Flame Man is fighting Spider-Man in Spider-Man Noir. That scene is all in one scene. And then afterwards they go and get a beer. <laughs> Mystery solved. Explain the oh, yeah, goat cause, man. Because Spider Man can drink beer in Europe, right? Well, except he's drinking an orange juice in the trailer. Oh, that's okay. You can't have Spider Man drink. Don't beer. worry about it. All oh right. yeah, they should anyway. have had him get drunk and then do some stuff in the city as a drunk Spider Man. Like, but he's <laughs> wearing all black, walking, like, well, dancing. But he's the same problem with Tony Stark. Yeah. He's an eighteen-year-old kid, so he, you know, mm-hmm. doesn't know. He's only he he at yeah. a very young yeah. age. Yeah. And he cries about it. Get married, Jane. I cheated on you. She's like, we're not dating. Yeah. Also, Gwen, I'm sorry. I'm not in this movie. Oh. <laughs> anyway, if you want a smooth, beautiful Nick Fury style head, you should shave with Harry's. Join the 10 million who've tried Harry's. Claim your trial offer by going to harrys.com slash rooster. Why Harry's? Harry's founders were tired of paying for razors that were overpriced and overdesigned. They knew a great shave doesn't come from gimmicks, like vibrating heads, flex balls, or handles that look like spaceships. Tactics that the leading brand has used to raise prices for decades. They've fixed that by combining a simple, clean design with quality, durable blades at a fair price. Harry's bought a world-class blade factory in Germany that's been making quality blades for over 95 years. They've received over 20,000 five-star reviews on Trustpilot and Google. Harry's replacement cartridges are just $2 each. That's half the price of the Gillette Fusion Pro Shield. All Harry's Blades come with a 100% quality guarantee. If you don't love your shave, let them know and they'll give you a full refund. Get a $13 value trial set that comes with everything you need for a close, comfortable shave. A weighted ergonomical handle, a five-blade razor with a lubricating strip and trimmer blade, rich lathering gel, and a travel blade cover. Listeners of Filmhouse can redeem their trial set at harrys.com slash rooster. Make sure you go to harrys.com slash rooster to redeem your offer and let them know we sent you to help support the show. All right. Thank you, Harrys, for bringing us here this week to talk about some Spider-Man. Uh, where'd we leave off? Sorry. Spider-Man. We were talking about all the Spider-Man done, characters we're Spider-Man. that were in this movie. I mean, we're pretty sure we analyzed every frame of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Twice. I didn't know there was a goat man. See, and now I'm Flame Man. Oh. Flame Man Ferris wheel. <laughs> Spider-Man <laughs> Noir. Let's just move on. Spider-Man Noir running. Is it Spider-Man Noir? Is he like he doesn't have a suit so he gets a bunch of crap from I mean, yeah, but this is this is their fan service for fi- Spider-Man Noir. Yeah. yeah. That's, That's what they do with, do with all the movies. They don't do it, you know, verbatim. They take the best parts of different things and mix it in and jerks and mm-hmm. nerds like James and I go, ooh, ah, and mm-hmm. go, oh, that's Boss yeah. Nass or whatever. Cool. Yeah. yeah, That's what I said. So, <laughs> For the fans. <laughs> they were talking about the multiverse. You guys think it's it's Mysterio's fake out. Mm-hmm. What if this is like the right time to introduce the multiverse? Oh, and then you get X-Men so. and Fantastic Four. Well, it seems like they wouldn't use this movie to do it if they're negotiating with Sony about potentially losing that shit. Yeah, I don't know that they're going to well, do it's not anything. Just Spider-Man multiverse. It's like all of the stuff. So that's how you get all the heroes we've never heard of before, like I don't the know. X-Men. Or it just, I just feel like this wouldn't be the property that they yeah. would push that agenda in. Like they have their flagships, and if they're currently negotiating, or whatever, if there's a p- possibility that they may not have complete control over this brand anymore, I don't think that. I mean. Kind of like the way Spider-Man Homecoming was kind of an accessory film. Mm-hmm. It was a really nice accessory film, but it didn't really push 
any of the MCU ma- narrative forward. Not really. Yeah. I think that's how they'd want to keep this. I guess well, the. Oh. I was going to say that the only thing it really does talk about is like the street level reaction to what's happening. You know, when the Avengers Tower is exploding and aliens are invading, it's yeah. like, what do real people do in that situation? And I think that's where Spider Man fits in. Yeah. It's to your broader question of is is this a post Avengers film that is giving us an, an entertaining time, but playing a little bit safe in terms of advancing any of a universe? Mm-hmm. Or will it actually do that? My gut says it's going to play it a little bit safe and mm-hmm. not really advance much. I, I think that's huh. fine, too. Like, it didn't bother me about... Home. I wasn't watching Homecoming going like, come on, guys, I need to get more... Like, what's what's going to happen next mm-hmm. in the in the Avengers war plot line or whatever? I think, actually, it's Spider-Man is such a good character. This is standalone fun movies. He, yeah, he, yeah, he can go. I think it is kind of a shame because if they're... If they... Did, were able to make him the new flagship character of the MCU. Tom Holland is great. Spider Man has such fucking great characters and villains and just so much great stuff into it that even links out into the other worlds. Mm-hmm. And he's also a great barrier or entry point for Fantastic Four and probably the X Men. Yeah. Like, it's, it's he shame. can fit in any superhero movie. Yeah. Spider Man, Spider Man, yeah. Times. Spider Man could literally be the next Tony Stark. So it's a shame that this character is in business, business Flux. jail, yeah, or, jail. Yeah, or, yeah. or it's a custody battle. Yeah, basically, <laughs> it's a shame. It's a custody. Um, yeah. Especially this version of him because I really like it a lot. Yeah, yeah. we'll oh, we'll see what happens with it. But like, it's, it's funny, Dan. You and Bruce are you're the funny guys. Here you go, and then this movie they're going to surprise us with X Men and like. <laughs> The, did you there, say that? No, but like I remember, Bruce. Bruce was convinced. And, and the lead up he, to Endgame, we were talking about. Yeah, they're like that. they're gonna they're gonna announce, and oh. I, I was convinced that they were gonna do something with X Men or at least allude to it. But they've mm. when when they do an X Men thing, we will know about it only because Disney's gonna do a big press <laughs> release about oh, who yeah. they cast. Yeah. Who's yeah. Wolverine? Yeah, yeah. there's there, also I mean, an X Men movie coming I was, out. What you mean, New Mutant? Oh, oh, There's yeah, that's the last one. I, I <laughs> no, I New just Mutants felt like is the last one. <laughs> Endgame had so much going for it that you didn't. Need, they they could save X Men. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That movie had so much going for it. They didn't need to impress audiences with something else. It does take a suit. Yeah, they've they've got time. Like that's the thing is they Disney is probably at least thinking. Okay, we need another ten year cycle. How do we do that? Well. Now that Iron Man and Captain America are done, which were and well, I guess Thor is still yeah. loosely probably going to be involved, but um, not in the same way that that big build out that they did for the last ten years or whatever. So the next ten years are probably going to be maybe Spider Man, but mostly X Men, Fantastic Four. What else did they get in the Fox deal? Adam Warlock. That's <laughs> right. Well, I think they're going to double down first with some Black Panther. Yeah, some more Captain. No, Marvel, yeah, use what you got. Some more Doctor Strange. Yeah, I I really do hope they can make a few more of these and have like a Sinister Six movie because they've been having you know all these little kind of C list villains like the Vulture. Oh man, yeah. who the shit gives? I mean, who cares about? They the did Vulture? a great job, but they did a wonderful. Yeah, job. Yeah, they did a great yeah. job, and it looks like they're going to do a great job with exactly. another C list villain mm-hmm. too. So Brian, if they can do that the one more time, of Birdman. They, well, imagine <laughs> if they had a Green Goblin. <laughs> like, imagine if they had an actual like. They did him primary spy, Spider Man antagonist. Um, I like I'm how you know <laughs> movies like Logan, you know, even even a character like Wolverine, where they rebooted X Men with the Brian Singer X Men's, mm-hmm. but they still kept Hugh Jackman, you know, as mm-hmm. Wolverine. What do you mean they rebooted X Men? Well, oh, I mean, I would oh. say that going to the past was them being like, okay, yeah, well, we're I, with I, first I, class, restart, yeah, with first class, and with they, they're gotcha. restarting X Men. X Men is um, is it seems to forget its own lore more yeah. than anyone else. So do confused. you think that Willem Dafoe could reprise Green Goblin? Love to see it. You don't love want to Chris see Cooper? it. Love to see it. I would love to see it. Chris Cooper is yeah. Chris Cooper's no. like, he sucked. In I have movie. long he nails. Sucked. Dead. <laughs> <laughs> Take my uh, mantle. Uh, Boy, boy, man, whatever you are, I just want him to have the top knot from Aquaman. Oh yeah, he he was rocking that top yeah, knot. The suit was already there. He will do superhero films until the day he dies, and that's what I love about Willem Dafoe. And he's he got it. a big dick. But then he goes and makes a movie like Light, the Lighthouse Keeper or whatever with Robert Pattinson. You're yeah, like, he doesn't care. You are diverse, Willem Dafoe. <laughs> yep. I mean, you seen Antichrist? They make I him come blood. Oh yeah. Is that where you saw his dick? No, no, no. He did it uh, in some weird like. 1980s like French TV show. He just came oh. out swinging his dong. The dick is a it's a 
show dick or whatever. Oh, was it? A stunt dick. It, it looked it's real. A, no, in the in Antichrist, it's uh, it's a stunt dick. I mean, he's a method actor. Cause, so. Well, because the director said that his dick was too big. Willem Dafoe's, yeah. Yeah, Willem Dafoe's dick was too big. It sounds like a funhouse joke, but it's not. It's, <laughs> it's from really an actual <laughs> interview where he said that his dick was too big, and so they needed to get a more reasonable <laughs> dick for the slow motion shot of it fucking a pussy. <laughs> Jesus. Well, uh, I'm good with Spider-Man if you guys are. Yeah, I think we've discovered, we figured Have out we? the whole plot. All right. All right. Well, we spoiled. We just saved you all fifteen bucks at the. I'm going to be wrong about everything. Yeah, if I generally, if I can guess it, that means it's not. They're not going to do it. Yeah, that that is the the new age, right? Of like uh, the subverting James. Yeah, that's <laughs> everyone. Everyone goes okay. Well, they know we're going to do this, so we have to go in the opposite direction. Yeah, but and kill the dragon. Your mom still likes your ideas. <laughs> You're right. She does. Do you not like any of his ideas? I was trying to help you with that. Oh, oh shit. <laughs> Wait. We're... Never mind. Cut all no, that. No, that was a good segue. <laughs> that's uh, so that's way too soon. No, you, you, too soon. Yeah. At least is at least is sometimes reckless with her segues. I think you, <laughs> she she I think you get the ad. She nailed them last week. Really? I thought you saved it to the end. So you have some meat in the middle. Is that a well, it'll be a surprise now. Okay. Did you know um, more? Uh, uh, what's his name? Prowler was in Spider-Man: Homecoming. Oh yeah, yeah I did. Yeah, this is childish Gambino. <laughs> 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 All right, uh, spoiler. You guys are bored with Spider Man. Let's move on. Bored. To, let's move on to it. it to death. Yeah, let's talk about the clown. It. There was this trailer this morning. I haven't seen the first it. Oh, um, dog. So yeah, everyone gives me a hard time. Dog. I'm so embarrassed. Good. I love it. But I've got like a month, two months good, before good, this movie comes good out. Good casting for the uh the older crew. This mm. was there actual nudity in this? Am I gonna have to blur this? What? Uh, no. Which is like sneaking around in the uh, background. Nah. It's the best part of this trailer. Now this is for all ages. Yeah, it's great. And people who like big, strong it, chins. It was such a great, I loved it. Yeah. I it thought was it was such great. a great movie because it was like like 20% uh, Goonies where there was like a scene where they're like, let's clean up the blood in this apartment. And it like plays <laughs> like like fun music because they're like cleaning Cindy it Lopper. up and everything. Yeah. Um, but then, uh, but then, then it gets real, like fucking hardcore, dark. Like I don't know, man. I I loved every moment of that movie. And yeah. like good kids. I haven't seen it, but people say the kid actors are actually yeah. good, which They're is really, very really rare. Good. Really, really good kids. Yeah. Really good. Kid and actors. I mean, the, the kid actors in the original like miniseries were good too. I think yeah. Jonathan Brandis is in it. Mm-hmm. He is. Oh, that's was. right. Yeah. How many times can you bring him up today? <laughs> as many as we can. <laughs> yeah. We, we love keep his about, legacy yeah. alive. I mean, Damn. Hollywood basically murdered him, but mm-hmm. uh, without him, so we would never got actually. Love Bugs or but whatever it's called. This is a... Lady Bugs. This is a great scene. <laughs> yeah. But so this is his daughter? This is It's daughter? No. I know. That's, well, that's Pennywise. In the oh, book, it is it. when yeah. she comes back as an adult, there's like a Hansel and Gretel, Gretel type witch mm-hmm. that she encounters. When they're all going around Derry trying to like re- bring mm-hmm. back their memories or whatever, and I'm mm-hmm. assuming that's what this is supposed to mm-hmm. be. I mean... The thing about it in the town is that he just manifests as different terrible. Like that's the whole like it's vibe like of it. That, blocking. You know what? Just making fun he, of the compression. He manifests his stuff. So like she is him, but also probably yeah, yeah. some woman who is corrupted he, by him. He it's is a like, he is like a cosmic deity. Playing this is hilarious. Yeah, followed by the, I, oh, I'm gonna have to play it's, that. She's just doing all sorts of creepy. <laughs> My the, bad, it's gotta. The first movie did a great job of number one, uh, making a villain that actually makes sense in a horror movie, only because Pennywise lives off of he feeds off of fear, which I think is great. So many times in scary movies, it's always like, why? I don't. What are those movies? The uh, not the Conjuring ones, but the um, for, uh, Annabelle. It, that wasn't Anything Annabelle. like the Insidious Sinister? sinister it may have been an Insidious or Sinister one of those. It was the one where the girl had the broken leg. And oh. I I never laughed harder at a jump scare, but there's a part where she's like, she's stuck in a room and she's crippled, right? So she like can't get around. And then she falls over on her face and she's looking at her, And then a dead body, like, like a, a mannequin just goes, and like falls on her. And he's like looking at her smiling. And it was meant to be scary, but it was like, all right. What, what, why is it doing that? Why is it just oh. haunting you? Why is it? There's no reason. And it's always like, it's trying to kill me. The monster got her then and there. And then they open the door and it's gone. And it's like, you're, it's just scary for scary sake. Like, mm-hmm. it's stupid. Yeah. At least they have a, like a, a reason in the lore of it that 
Pennywise is becoming stronger the more scared the children are of him. Well, I also think my the favorite device. thing about the story in general, but also the the how, and I think it's done incredibly well in the first movie is how the town is infected with this thing. Yes, mm-hmm. Derry is a character. The town Certainly. is a character and yeah. the people there are infected. So mm-hmm. there's moments where people are are not necessarily Pennywise. They're just doing what people do, but it's like bad behavior. Like yeah. they're almost corrupted by this evil. Her dad, Beverly's dad, you mm-hmm. kind of just get the feeling. Like it's it's weird because it's like normal instances of day-to-day violence. Like mm-hmm. school bullies, mm-hmm. her abusive dad, but you get the impression that like there's something more like yeah, they're yeah. they're maybe that they're not inherently these people, but like there's something well, going like, on beneath the yeah, surface that's am, making them eat worse. Well, one of my favorite moments from the first movie is when one of the kids is getting bullied by the side of the road and they all freeze because they notice a car is coming. There's like an old couple driving the car mm-hmm. and they like kind of drive slowly by watching the bullying take place, but they don't take any action. Yeah, they just keep they going. don't they don't do anything. They just kind of like it's obvious that this kid is being bullied and he's in trouble. And instead of doing anything, they just keep driving. And then as the car's driving away, you notice that in the back seat is Pennywise's balloon. Mm-hmm. And you're like, like that is his influence over the city. And I, man, it's mm. it's done so well. I always, so got well the, I always got the idea that the city was like a representation of trauma and sort of like uh, victims in a sense that were like all the adults have dealt with Pennywise in some way, maybe not the same way these kids have. Uh, the, the the losers club that we get later or whatever, but like people have dealt with it and then they just forgotten it. Mm-hmm. And, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, and they yeah. they sort of they're in a way you're enabling the cycle to continue of trauma and victimhood. Uh, and it, but it's I don't know Stephen King, even though he's coked out when in, he was writing this stuff, he did such a good job in the of book and those I th- layers. I think in the movie they do it this way too but every 27 years is when mm-hmm. Pennywise like comes back yeah. and starts killing kids again like, mm-hmm. yeah. why 27 and years I he rests d- the, he's some sort of cycle where he needs to rest mm-hmm. yeah, and I then feel he like wakes up and feeds he feeds and, and he like hibernates that's like sort of the idea he's like a bear maybe more in the book <laughs> or something but then uh, when they when they become adults um, they sort of like forget what kind of happened to them? Mm-hmm. And they like they know that they said that they would all meet. Mm-hmm. They don't exactly remember. Like they're like there was something evil, but we don't. Yeah. Well, there's something because um, you, I mean the book has has existed for 30, 40 years or whatever, and then the miniseries was another thing. But like, there's a interesting reason why they all come back. Um, yeah. Well, but uh, well, they come back because it's been twenty seven years yeah. in the book. That's why uh-huh. they come back. But then something something happens, happens in the city, and then they come back, and it's sort of like, yeah. Mo- yeah, you'll see. Yeah, they, I mean, they come they come back in the book because they they swore that they would come back in twenty seven years to prevent this from happening again. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, is it is it pretty faithful to the book? The first movie. Mm-hmm. Um, I think you're the no one right, right? no <laughs> no. <laughs> I know they left out the the weird the child sex, sex stuff, scene, but there I I feel like there's also why. like I'm I'm really curious to see what they're gonna do with the like lore of. <laughs> <laughs> of You're talking about the it, yeah. Because I I wouldn't mind if they change it mm-hmm. a little bit. It's kind of a little Watchmen graphic it's, novel. That's like. exactly what I was <laughs> like saying to Dan before. Like I wouldn't mind if they gave it a little bit more grounded of a uh, backstory. Like mm-hmm. the so the when she's in the old woman's house and they're looking at that picture and the old woman's like, oh, that's my father. He joined the circus. Like I wouldn't mm-hmm. mind if they kind of like went that route mm-hmm. and well, said there's you know. a deleted scene that was in the original script I believe that was the the true detective creator Terry I think it, Fukunaga. I believe he was the one who wrote the original draft and it had this crazy scene in it where uh, the it was either the original opening of this one or I think they may have even shot it where he's but, eating a baby yeah but it, it's oh, like yeah. it's like the 18th century or something like that it's yeah. like the founding of dairy and you don't know what's going on but this this family like gives birth to a baby then they just like leave it in a room and then, like, Pennywise, like, he's this naked creature. He's not, like, full clown yet. Mm-hmm. He's just a thing. And he just sort of, like, like a spider comes down and so eats it cool. and, like, devours it. And they're that's sort of, like, showing the deal people have been making with this thing Boy for walkers. centuries. I'm pretty <laughs> sure it was it was <laughs> shot. Yeah. So and it, I think they said that they were probably going to use it in this movie. If that, oh, I hope that's, that's cool. the opening. I want to see it. Yeah. So, like, I, they're kind of, I like that they're showing that in this. So fucked up. In the new trailer where there's like, oh, there's my father, you know, Mr. Pennywise, which who knows if that's true. This is all. Oh, yeah. This her some, might be her 
Yeah. Yeah. yeah some weird manifestation. But like, I love. I I would actually like some sort of uh, backstory on Pennywise or like his iterations through the years because if I remember the miniseries correctly, it's not as interesting as the first half. Yeah. The first half with the kids well, was really scary and creepy because, but then Pennywise isn't in it mostly, but also the miniseries I heard was not a really good adaptation the, or well done ad- adaptation. The miniseries is like cheese, like nine or like, you know, 1990 cheesy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, I owned it on a two VHS <laughs> nice. uh, box I think, set. I think I had it on two CDRs. But, <laughs> mm. <laughs> like they're, they're, cause there are also like special effects in it. That mm-hmm. like or oh, practical dated. special effects that look pretty bad and not scary. Like when uh, Tim Curry comes out of the drain and it it opens up like claymation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and there's like a head in a fridge that looks pretty mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, cheesy. Yeah. I just, and then it's kind of weird. They just end up kind of fighting like a giant spider at the end. It was yeah. like it was very unclear what happened. And then yeah, someone I don't know. There's some there's something involving a bike. The the book really <laughs> lays down like all this weird stuff that when I was reading it, I was like, you know. It gets heady. Uh, I remember that part. It gets pretty, from what I, I haven't read it, but from the few things I have understood, it's very bizarre. It gets Like really ties weird. into the rest of the Stephen King universe, right? Yeah. 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 It gets yeah. a little kind of Dark Tower-y, yeah. a little bit more like, let's get into the cosmic side of things. And, you know, there's a balance of a good and an evil. And how do we figure that out? But uh, <laughs> I'm with you where it'd be really cool to see, like, the manifestations of Pennywise. Yeah. I, I think if they... That would actually be really interesting if in the movie, <laughs> I love that, if they break it up with kind of random flashbacks or like different time periods of Pennywise incarnations and like maybe there was another like Losers Club of like 1912 or that whatever. That failed or something. Oh, absolutely. That'd be great. And yeah. Then you're, and you're seeing their specters or whatever haunting dairy. Pacing wise, it would make sense to open with something like that, to open in the 16th century or something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm. I'm sold though. The I, cast in this is pretty crazy. Oh yeah, it's great, great, love it, love every bit. <laughs> yeah, the guy that, every bit that's playing um, the hypochondriac kid, mm-hmm. it's like so spot on. <laughs> like you could see that kid growing into that dude. Mm-hmm. Oh, they got the guy from um, yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking about the. I think he was in an, an Insidious or oh. wasn't one with Ethan Hawke when he finds the tapes. Sinister. Sinister. Yeah, I think he was the cop oh. in the neighborhood. But yeah, they got him, and then they got Bill Hader and. Uh, Professor X, and Jane then they McAvoy. got um, uh, Chastain's. What, she's also in Dark Phoenix. Yeah, okay. yeah. They got the whole Dark Phoenix cast back <laughs> for one final hurrah, and it's to fight a clown. Oh, okay. I think that's there's something beautiful about that. Georgie can never come back. Dan, why haven't you Georgie. watched the first one? I don't know. I just I'm not, I'm not huge on horror, and I think I just missed it when mm-hmm. it came out in theaters. Um, and it's nowhere for free. Or on any of the services I rent. It's at my house. But yeah, I mean, James was saying he owns a copy, so I'm going to bust it? in there tonight. Yeah, I got it on Google Play. It's the movie. Came I have a out couple months. Like, yep. There's like a handful a of months. movies that and I've talked about this before, where it's like, it's like I go see it and I'm like pre-ordering that digital, mm. and I'll just like pre-order it. This I I definitely got this. I got a question for you, Dan. Did you mm. enjoy like Poltergeist? Nah, not really. Okay, that's fine. I, I, like I'd put Poltergeist on the level of like kind of like smart horror. Or, or better horror, I guess, of like something where I don't I don't consider it to just be like a horror movie, I guess. It's also so well made. Like it's, it's really so good. well shot. Really, really good. Yeah. Movie. And the pacing of it is like anti horror. It's mm-hmm. not just like jump scares, like it's one of I remember watching the trailer and thinking like, Well, I wish it didn't show me all these things because now I know when all the scary stuff happens. And it's not the tra- this trailer doesn't tell you when any of the scary stuff happens. Yeah. <laughs> because the the pacing for the scary stuff is so anti standard horror. Is it like a period piece? Like this first half? Does it take uh, place in the eighties or something? Yeah, it's yeah. They 80s. pushed it from yeah, what is it's it, like the nineteen fifties. Yeah. So mm-hmm. they pushed it to the eighties. Yeah. So they modernized so way, it in a way. So that way now the second one will be present day. Yeah. Right. So cool. It's a smart move. But I, I'm just saying like I think it has a good like mystery about it, and it, it's just overall a good story, and it's well acted. And typical horror movies, I think, is I don't know. It's sort of like it's it's like pornography in a weird way, where it's, oh, it is the, the, the same plot thing. is just there for you to get that that high, mm-hmm. that dopamine hit, or, or like to, to to be scared and then feel safe. This movie it like, makes your body feel something. Yeah, I like I liked it because you you just always felt dread, but you also there was like that little bit of hope that was going through, but it was. They, ah, they do just such a good thing that like movies don't really do anymore where they make parents or adults into bad people. And you don't, I don't think you get a lot of that in movies today anymore. But that was a lot of Stephen King's thing. He did a really good job of 
dealing with that sort of, th- I don't know. We're, I think we're all scared of our parents in some way <laughs> I, or just family members sure. or adults in general. I also uh, think the big thing of that about the first movie was that like until it came out, no, no pun intended, but until it came mm-hmm. out, you always just imagine Pennywise as the Tim Curry character. Mm-hmm. There's like no other way you could imagine it. And now I can't, th- Thing. It took me a minute to picture the Jim Carrey character because this Tim new Curry, Penny, but whatever. Uh, Jim new, Curry, same Jim guy. Curry. This new, this new Pennywise is such a fully realized. This is they like, nailed it. Yeah, they, it's and he like can move such, his eyes independently. It's so mm-hmm. so <laughs> fantastic. Freak. Like and yeah. the way he moves and the way he looks and the way he speaks. Those scars guard genes. It's man. like it's like the Heath Ledger's Joker, but for Pennywise the clown. Well, when they released I, the first image, I think everyone was like negative on it. They were like, oh, it's oh, kind of yeah. dumb. Why is his head so big? Yeah. Uh, for me, like, uh, I think a lot of people are like, Goonies or Stand By Me are my favorite, like, you know, kids in the 80s. I always really loved It. And then when I read 20th Century Boys, I was like, oh, man, these are, like, kind of similar in mm-hmm. that, you know, this group of friends share this really weird traumatic experience. What's and then 20th reunite. Century Boys? It's this, this manga um, about like this group of kids that experience something together and then come like like it come back together as adults. Sleepers. And then, <laughs> sleepers. Not the uh, same yeah, experience. I was never, as sleepers. Uh, very similar. Yeah, I was, very yeah similar. some people are sleepers. People. <laughs> How many people in twenty century door? 20th century boys die as a result of a hot dog cart falling down the stairs. <laughs> and then get raped for in, it. In, in, yeah, in Hell's Kitchen, yeah, and then raped by Kevin Bacon uh, for thirty minutes. I, mean, I think three. Okay. <laughs> Go see Sleepers or read it. And mm-hmm. read 20th Century Boys if you like it. You got it. So you guys, be a hero this weekend. Show the moms in your life some love. It's much deserved. Send them some flowers using 1-800-Flowers.com. You know what never goes out of style? Surprising a friend or loved one or mom for Mother's Day with a dazzling bouquet from 1-800-Flowers.com. Just think how great you'll make them feel with a surprise bouquet of vibrant roses. 1-800-Flowers are perfect for any occasion, anniversaries, birthdays, or even making your friend or loved one's day just because. Right now, 1-800-Flowers has amazing deals on beautiful bouquets and arrangements starting at just $29.99. Whether it's roses, lilies, daisies, or palms, all blooms from 1-800-Flowers are picked at their peak and shipped overnight to ensure freshness and her amazement. Gorgeous bouquets and arrangements starting at $29.99 is an amazing deal, but it won't last long. Simply pick your delivery date and 1-800-Flowers will handle the rest. Be the reason your friend or loved one's day is brighter with stunning bouquets from 1-800-Flowers.com. To order bouquets and arrangements starting at $29.99, go to 1-800-Flowers.com. Click the radio icon and enter code FILM. Order today and save at 1-800-Flowers.com. Code FILM. So order today and save at 1-800-Flowers.com. Use the code FILM when you check out. Uh, Click on the little radio icon, put in the code FILM, you'll save. Get your mom some flowers. Uh, she'll love them, I promise. And thank you, 1-800-Flowers.com, for bringing us here this week to talk about Spider-Man and It. And um, we have a few minutes left. You guys want to talk about Watchmen briefly? Did you sure. watch this trailer? No, not yet. All right. Well, you guys can watch James watching the trailer sure. for the first time. Did, has there been any information of where it takes place or Oop. how it takes place? The Watchmen? Anywhere? <laughs> how? Yeah. I mean, my only thinking is when... It's got to be after. It's got to be after. Like I feel like the army of quote unquote of Rorschach. Oh sure. But is it is it comic book or is it movie? Is that after movie is my guess. Yeah. You think it's movie? Okay. Does anyone even remember the movie? I, that, yeah, I don't know that. It, you think it'd be after the movie? I think it's. Or is it just sort of its I, own maybe thing? Maybe independent. Yeah. 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 I don't know. Nash uh, Bridges. <laughs> He's back, baby. Never left. Yeah. Or Cheech. It's an interesting idea. There's like an army of Rorschachs and but I just don't know if I can enjoy it without Patrick Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't figure out what the fuck's going on. I don't think you're supposed to. It's a it's a Lindelof affair. So I guess if you a lot of people love the leftovers, so but he redeemed himself with leftovers, right? That's what everyone says. A lot of people say it's like the best ending in TV history. Hmm. What are you two talking about? Huh. Oh, nothing. It's just the end of the world. It's got kind of like a hmm. a Walking Dead vibe to it in a weird way. Hmm. I don't know. Yeah. It, I will reserve judgment on that. Okay. Yeah. You got to see some more. 
until you so see have any idea what's going on. I, I, Silk Spectre. And I need to know where Owlman. how it fits and yeah. what it does. I mean, it's got to be came after. Before it has it. to be after. Like it has to be the notebook was distributed. Right. I and think and Rorschach's got a cult that or something. W- front, new frontiersman or whatever, like yeah. posted all the notebooks and stuff. There's a guy in a panda suit. Why, what are all the yellow masks on mm-hmm. the cops? Well, they're the Watchmen police force. Makes sense. We finally have someone to watch the Watchmen. Mm. It's Watchmen versus Rorschach. I don't know. <laughs> one of the, <laughs> and the the Rorschachs are like a militia or something. The only like it, the yeah. only thing is that one of the cool things about Watchmen was it was a world with heroes. Mm-hmm. And I don't, maybe it's just not being shown in the trailer, but it doesn't feel like this is a world with heroes. Like, like yes, it doesn't feel, you're right. I would, I mean, I, mean, I would agree. That's something. It could be Ozymandias or whatever sitting as an older. That's what I was just thinking, that Daniel Day-Lewis looking dude. Yeah. What's his, I mean, Jeremy know Irons? Guys. Yeah, Jeremy Irons. Is Jeremy, oh, it is Jeremy Irons again. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I mean, he's yeah. sitting like Dr. Uh, Manhattan. Very he's very Ozymandias. Doing, he does Ozymandias. look like an Ozymandias type. It's Because he's I, all rich looking. Yeah. yeah. Gold. I'll, I'll watch it, but White I think undies. it's going to be, I think it's going to be, it's going to be a heavy drama, probably fairly light on action. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of mystery boxes. Poss- yeah. A lot of little mystery bits. More reading than we'd like. <laughs> More likely. I don't, I don't, I, it looks interesting. Yeah, I don't, I, I think, don't think it looks it, interesting. Yeah. I, I'm wondering if it's something that needs to be called Watchmen. Yeah. Are they just sort of? I think they're yeah they're using the name. They're mining that IP. <laughs> well, because oh yeah, it's so I, recognizable, everyone I, is watching. I forget HBO and Warner Brothers are the same company now, so yeah. it's like, well, that's something they own, so makes sense. But I don't, I don't know if you're gonna do cool stuff. More was it Vertigo Comics that did? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. So I, if you want to do a V for Vendetta series oh, or. Yeah pull anything else it, it looks sort of v for vendetta ish honestly with mm-hmm. people kind of becoming mm-hmm. crime fighters or it, it vigilantes looks, it looks like a preacher or walking dead or any of those like cable shows i think it, it looks like a cable yeah. television show it doesn't look like a, a high octane action sort of thing not that it know. needs to be there will be violence and titties in the first episode i promise okay that, that's your promise sir i don't know that's that a leftovers guarantee. was really that that way i huh? No, I mean I watched the wasn't first the first two ep- two or three episodes mm-hmm. of Leftovers like four times, and I I don't think there's any right. of that in it. That Justin uh, was it Trudeau or uh, Thoreau? He's, he's got some abs. <laughs> he does have some abs. <laughs> yeah, he's a sexy beast. No, oh, I'm interested in that. Justin Trudeau tweets out his like running playlists. Cool. <laughs> Is that a different person? <laughs> That's the Prime Minister of Canada. Or a different person. He was in the Leftovers. <laughs> he wishes. Okay. I don't know. I, I think HBO needs a few more hits to keep people coming. They're talking about how many people are going to drop HBO after Game of Thrones ends because there's not much else to watch. Does well, everyone the hate dude left? Like the dude who has been the mastermind yeah. of HBO's CEO is gone. R- rise. He's like this. Warner Brothers sucks. <laughs> <laughs> well, they promoted like someone that wasn't. Uh, you know, didn't know was what his the fuck underling at Showtime or like uh, his guy at Showtime. His equivalent was promoted above him. Yeah. But like, he wasn't going to take does, that. Do you are you so everything I read online? Everyone hates Game of Thrones now. It was of, it was such a huge whiplash from a it was. really awesome episode to some real trash, yeah. just week to week. I, I have no idea what's going to happen now. I'm fine with it. Yeah. I'm a, yeah. I people are people are pointing it to the clip today where I guess we'll, I hate spoiling it, but they're like I, oh, I spoilers won't say, for Game of Thrones. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say no exactly way. what happened, but it yeah. was the clip where uh, one of the the creators and he was like. And Danny forgot about the fleet. It's like, eh, maybe poor choice of words of just saying. And then they forgot. They forgot about them. Like, I don't forget about it. Yeah. <laughs> it, it does. I was worried about this, that they're going to sort of speed through stuff. But Well, you know, there was a very big budgetary reason for, like, Jon Snow to not say goodbye to his dire wolf. Oh, and really? Like, it was too expensive, so we made it different. Huh. And it's just, it seemed, like, really weak and made me not like that character very well, much. Well, in their defense, not to get into a Game of Thrones subject... From the beginning of the show, they've talked about how miserable those dire wolves have fucking been. Yeah. And they're like, they're like, if I recall, there's like interviews where they're like, we can't wait for these dragons to get big because they're way easier to make than these fucking wolves. Hmm. Like ever since the really? beginning of the show, they've been like, making big wolves well, is the hardest thing a computer can do. It's got to look real. <laughs> oh, and, and a so, dragon. Can, you and know, so it's when something, fantasy. when when you have a human actor interact, because I guess the way they do with it is they try and film an actual wolf. Mm-hmm. which are almost impossible to train and never want to do anything. And then they have to scale it up using a computer mm-hmm. for the scene. 
And so to get that interaction to happen between live actor Kit Harrington and CG Wolf mm -hmm. is way more complex than people think it is. I'm sure it's tough. And so I, I just and so I think at a certain point he just make the box. <laughs> I think at a certain point Content they were like, scale. well, yeah. we can spend the money here or we can spend the money on the other episode making it darker. And they went with the dark. <laughs> <laughs> making it darker. I'm just saying that, that was a budgetary thing that affected a character in my yeah. mind and in that's a, not good. An arc. Yeah. A, in a weird way, I've yeah. never I get when I read the first book I imagined the direwolves to be like I guess more otherworldly in a weird way instead of big dogs, <sighs> but I guess that's I don't know. So I've never really been like, I never had much of an opinion on the dire wolves because they're I, just I mean, sort of there. They've also kind of flowed in and out of the show as budget has allowed the whole time. Yeah. So when it ended that way, I was like, okay. Well, and sense. was that the last wolf to wrap up was his yeah. wolf? Yeah. I think so it's it. like, it's pretty unceremonious. When these when these wolves are supposed to be tied to all of these children yeah. and that's the last, because like Arya's moment was like pretty fitting for the, her. She didn't touch uh, she, that's not me. That's she, not she me. Touch her. That's not me. <laughs> she threw rocks at it or whatever. Right? That's not me. No. Uh, no well, that, there was that, but then when the, they ran into each other again in the woods, and she was like, "Come was with like me." Running a wolf yeah. pack. Oh, there's a panda man. Yeah. She said, "Come with I me," and the wolf that. was like, "Nah, I'm good." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But then, yeah, I guess a hug would have been nice. I don't know. But yeah, no, I'm saying like yeah. for we'll the scratch. last one, Lost you should have done something. Just have a just have more. a stand in wearing a fur coat. Yeah. And hug that. Get Andy Circus on the horn. There you go. Yeah. But didn't have Andy. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. Anyway, I, we go. got way off. How do we start talking about Game of Thrones? Oh, it's HBO. HBO. Yeah. Anyway, they got a couple weeks. I'm looking forward we'll to. Uh, I'm looking forward to the end. Me too. It's been a. And I can start something new, something fresh. Uh, Brock Meyer has been good. Uh, oh, Veep's yeah. been good. A lot of stuff has been good. So it's a good year for television. It's good. To have I think so. <laughs> All right. Thanks for coming around this week, you guys. Uh, thanks again to Harry's and One Eight Hundred Flowers. You should definitely order your mom some flowers, by the way. Use the code FILM. Uh, we'll be back next week, maybe with some Pokemon. I think that's this weekend. Um, I'm going to go see it this but weekend. we'll see. Yeah. Uh, see you next week, guys. Bye. Bye. Uh, here's my problem with the Ugly Dolls. They look like abominations. Yep. They should have names that match. Like, one of them well, should be called, like, Meet Rape Face. <laughs> right. And then, you know, he's Cleft there. They, they look <laughs> like yeah, abominations, lip. but they don't look ugly enough. I would say um, they don't no. look yeah, ugly enough. Yeah, they're ugly dolls. They should just take the, the characters from that movie, Nine. Uh -huh. Those yeah, are yeah. ugly dolls.